Welcome back to another edition of the Cross Border Interview Podcast. My name is Christopher Brown, and today we have Canadian country musician, music star to me, country musician, Laurie LeBlanc on the show. Laurie, thank you so much for doing this. It's an honor and a pleasure. Thanks. Very honored to be here. Thanks for uh, having me. No worries. Uh, I, I got to start with the same question I ask all my music uh, stars who come on the show. What does music mean to you? Music means to me a way of uh, putting in paper what I'm feeling, what I'm going through, ups and downs, uh, certain things I see during the day, weeks or months. Um, also, having something that connects with someone up there, either in a hopefully positive way, because I'm a positive guy, um, and, and move them in a certain way, and hopefully they'll they'll be able to, you know, get some good something good out of the song that's, that's being heard in, in either positive or, or in a reality or sadder way, I guess, is sometimes. Now, what about country music in particular? Because you, I've listened to your French music. I've listened to your new English album. Uh, where does country music come for you? Has it always been instilled? Because as you said at the beginning of the interview, before our interview started, you're in Moncton right now. Uh, is country music something that was always instilled in you as a child and you just went into that field? Or was country music something that came late to you? Uh, as a younger child, my parents, grandparents listened to country music back then and probably the Charlie Prides and, and the Kenny Rogers and so on. Uh, being a Francophone in Eastern New Brunswick, uh, on the Francophone side, we listened to Zachary Bichon of Louisiana or the Famille Ash, which is a popular Francophone uh, family out of Quebec. And that got all mixed in when I was younger, listening to all that. And then as my teens, obviously, I got uh, the rock influence from the heavy metal bands at a phase I went through. I think it must have been Kiss back then. I don't know. But I mean, you know, we went through that. But this is a very heavy country uh, communities, you know, around here. Everybody loves love country, especially where I live in Bucktouche. Uh, we call it, you know, a lot of people call it mini, mini Nashville because there's so many musicians and, and people love to, you know, to sing. And, and obviously, it needs to be country, of course. So let's talk about the new song, All In. It is the fourth song off the album. I just want to make sure I get it here. When it's right, it's right. Correct. What is All In? For, what What is the song about? Because I've listened to it uh, and I it's a great song. Anyone who hasn't listened to it, please go to the show notes. It's there. Listen to it, stream it, download it because it's a great song. But what does All In mean? All In started with a little poker game we had what we're doing here, me and my wife and some friends. And once we heard that a few times, my wife said, that mean, that could be a good title for a song. And, and when we think of a song, we not always, but often like to mix two ideas in the same song, meaning this song all in is about a guy and a girl at a final poker table, lots of lights, pressure people, obviously. And, and the guy's into that hot girl and she's given the poker eyes and so on. And at the end, well, everybody knows she's going to take the pot and go home. But they're also it mixed in with the lyrics are poker terms deliberately put in there. So it, if people listen to it and don't know poker terms, they think it's sort of a love story in the final, you know, final poker table. But people that know poker, there's about 20, 20 or 30 terms in there that, that, that designate poker, you know, when you play poker. So that's, that's about it where it started, I guess. So is that how you write music? Because I, I always find it fascinating when I talk to musicians on their, their their writing process. Is it something comes to you even at a poker table or at the grocery store and you're able to run with it? Or how does your writing process start? Because it, it varies from a musician to musician. So I want to know from you, how does the writing process go for you? Well, I mean, I did do lots of writing in French, not too much in English. We only had this one song on the album and people liked it, so we just decided to release it. But it comes from anything that happens. I'm more of a melody guy, I guess. I, I like to record a melody and often it becomes a chorus. And from there, I've got a bunch of ideas written down for titles or books or, or, or stories and, and then look at my melody and see what fits in there. And then we start from there, but it, it, it just happens that way I get most of the time. But once Again, I'm more of a la la la's guy, and then and from there we we, we put all that together and find and find out what we want to say in a story or or something that that would relate to the melodies that I that I get recorded or whatever. 
Now you just mentioned it there a few seconds ago, but I want to I want to pick up on it because I find it so fascinating that this is your first English song, English album that you have put out because you are traditionally a francophone uh, country star. So how was the process of going from a francophone music group to a more English based fan? Because now you are being heard across the country and more English listeners are picking up on your music. So what was that transition like and what was the decision behind moving towards a English album? Uh, first, I've been singing English all my life, obviously. We have some francophone stations here in, in southeastern New Brunswick, and, and we're happy to have it. It's our, it's our Acadian heritage and so on, and I've been making a living less full time with my wife as a manager for like five, six years now. But we, I wanted to do an album, all original, when the timing was right. I didn't feel up to writing all the songs myself, especially on the English side. I'm looking for good co-writers, people that would help me out or co-write with me. And it just happened that I won a, uh, a trip to France in 2019 at the Canadian Francophone Awards in Calgary, in a, sorry, <laughs> Calgary, in Montreal. Uh, but uh, we went up to France, did, did a show up there uh, for promotion and so on, and, and ended up singing a song or two with Don Miscall out of Ireland. I didn't know who Don was. He's a really great songwriter. You know, he wrote great songs for Lone Star and Backstreet Boys and so on. So we sang Country Rose together and so on. He said, if you never need any songs, let me know. So it started that way. He sent me like 20, 25 full demo songs. And that's where the, the ball started rolling. I, I contacted more songwriters, some out of the States and, and, and so on. And I got a couple of hundred good demos. So that's that's where it started and, and ended up the choosing process where I could connect to it. I wanted something that is somewhat 90s because that's sort of where I'm at, but also something that I, that would be, I guess, sort of today's mixture of instrumentation and so on that could please what's happening somewhat in mainstream and please myself, I guess, both ways. So that's why I chose for the songs I could connect to and, and a mix of all that. And the, the last one of the album was one we just happened to put in. It was all in, but that, that's how it started. And of course, before I... I I let you go to something else, but I happened to to uh, meet uh, Jason Berry, and Jason Berry, uh, I heard great things about him. Great studio, studio guy, Dean Brody's guitar player, and he was in Ontario. And when I contacted him, he said, "In June, I'm moving to Miramichi. I'm moving my my studio up there, and uh, my family's from up there, and I'm going to build a new studio, whatever else." So he moved in June, which is about an hour away from where I live. I was going to go to Ontario where he was, and and I ended up bringing Dean Brody's guys, and we spent three or four days recording the album at his Miramichi studio. Oh, wow. So everything just sort of fell in place. And, and when I got a song from Don and a skull called When It's Right, It's Right, it just ended up being the title of the album, too. Oh, I want to talk about the last year because this this album, uh, When It's Right, It's Right, came out in 2020. And uh, as anyone who is listening to this and anyone who has paid attention to some inclination of the news in the last uh, 20 months, you realize that we have been under a pandemic. So musicians like yourself haven't been able to get out on the road and actually connect with fans and actually uh, meet with or play performance halls. There have been sometimes, but not as much as you probably want. How has it been for yourself to release an album like this, which to me, I think it's amazing. I highly recommend all my listeners to go out and download it or stream it because it is a fantastic album. How has it been as an artist to release something and not be able to go out on the road so much and play it for the fans and potentially pick up new fans? Well, it's, it, it was hard. Obviously, the album was ready to be released. Uh, I think it was June 6, 2020. And and uh, this this thing hit in March. So what do we do? We, it was a shock at first. And then and we talked with my manager and, and, and everybody else that we're involved with. And, and we ended up just releasing it anyway um, for the simple reason that we... It, it would be something maybe the fans would like to hear during the pandemic. And, but it wasn't easy, obviously. We just ended up doing a, a virtual show at the Capitol Theater in Moncton with an empty, an empty theater, right, with a bunch of cameras. So we did all that on the social media. That was, that was weird, obviously. And then uh, and from there, we just went everything we normally do as far as promoting the singles, having tracks and everything else, you know. Uh, but we couldn't play. That was the only downfall. But it was a decision we made. And, and we're happy we did it. We, we ended up you know, releasing three or four singles. This is the last single, and uh, we'll be in the studio in, in, in the winter. But uh, now we got something out there people can listen to, and and, and we got a bunch of shows in, in Quebec and, and part of Ottawa and stuff that have been booked since 20, 2020, but have been pushed back again to 22. So at least we got some material that, that, that that's out there, and, and we can play live and, 
and by the time 22 comes along, we'll have more material, more material also. But it, it wasn't easy. It's just it's business as usual for me and my wife being uh, in our offices at home, but just not playing except for five or six shows we do this summer in, in New Brunswick. Um, your album has, uh, I, I would say, a, a good tune, a good melody, and I want to go back to All In right now because. I, I had the pleasure of watching the YouTube video as well because I thought maybe there's a video as well because I want to see what type of video. It is a catchy song. And when you see, uh, I'm not sure how this music video came about for All In, but when you see people line dancing to a song, it takes you back to that 90s feeling that you're talking about. Was that what you were going for when you when you wanted to release this uh, music video for All In? Or what were you going with when you decided to get people from, if I'm not mistaken, Europe to do line dancing on your music video? It's very funny because when I went to Europe and to France, uh, I noticed that they're very heavy line dancers and the music they choose is to do dancing. Now, I've got a guy, we have a friend, uh, I mean, it's in, in Europe, it's uh, Romuald, his name, and in, in France, and he, he does quite a bit to help us up there, and, and, and he loved this song and, and reached out to about a dozen dance associations in Australia, uh, I believe in France, and maybe, you know, not two, three, you know, countries, and uh, they decided to do choreogra choreography on the, on the dance, and we were submitted, they sent all those videos to us, uh, so then when we get the videos, we figured, why not do, we're probably going to have a, an official video for all, and it's going to be come, coming up real soon, but this was kind of nice for them to do that. And uh, they actually took the choreography and presented it to what they call the Euro European Championships, and it finished fifth out of 31 countries or submissions or whatever. So it's it's you know it's honorable that they decide to do that. It is it's probably a beaten field that, that can be danceable for line dance. As far as choosing what I what as far as it just happened that way, I'm a 90s guy, and I'm trying to mix 90s with today. I guess that's what I call it. Uh, today's 90s, maybe. Looking to get your message out? Looking to get your product heard about? Have an upcoming event in the province of Alberta. For as low as $50 per week, you can now advertise on the Cross Border Interview Podcast. Reach out today by visiting www.crossborderinterviews.ca and click on Advertise Now. If you book your advertisement during the month of December, you will get 50% off. Now, let's get back to the episode. We are living in a very, uh, 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 I, want to, I want to choose the word correctly here, and I apologize for this, but it, we're, we're living in a very 24-hour a day, seven-day a week uh, cycle. Um, your music has the ability, and I, I keep on harking back to this 90s vibe, because I when I listened to this, I was like, this feels like I'm listening to what my father, I grew up listening to with my father as a teenager in the 90s, because I was like, this feels like Garth Brooks, this feels like George Strait, These feel, this feels like a song that I could go back to the 90s and reminisce about the things that were going on. Is this your style across the board or is this just for the English album? Because when uh, I listen to your French music as well, and uh, I, I, I'm not openly fluent in French, but I, I can get by in a conversation. So I was able to pick up some words and understand it, but the melody is still there as well. You, you have an ability to bring back. Are you just giving credit to where you came from and your your influences as well when you're listening when you're playing these songs because your your style is so amazing. I just I have to keep on talking about it for my listeners Jeez. because I need them to know that this is a great music and great album. So that influence as a child, did you want to make sure that you gave credit to where credits do when you were doing your music now? Uh well, I guess this being my first album, I talked to little Jason, the producer, and probably looking for my sound also. Um, so, but as far as All In, which which was almost not put on the album, which was not was almost not released, because although it's something I we, I wrote, I found maybe it was too traditional, I guess. So, but we're glad we did. Uh, as far as what All In resembles, it could resemble what I'm doing in French. Uh, the French side, 90s music, is considered modern, uh, from where I'm from anyway. I'm like a bit modern music, or, or, or quite traditional in French anyway. But um, but for, I, actually, for the future, uh, we're, we're writing a lot now, 
and we're putting a lot of what I of what I want to put in there. Being more at ease with the second album, second album, maybe more my sound in there. Uh, it was all new territory, right, for us. It was a new album, it was a new producer, it was a new complete market. It was Canadian. It was, you know, everybody we know that's playing from Dean Brody to Brett Kissel to whoever you listen on there. So my songs being pitched to radio stations, which have all those songs as well to choose from. So it being an independent artist song. Is it odd but, to hear yourself on the radio? Uh, very odd the first time in English, yeah. <laughs> Although I grew up, I mean, look, uh, Brad Paisley, uh, Zach Brown, Alan Jackson, George Strait, Keith Whitley, Randy Travis, you know, when I was, you know, was, when I was in early 20, the, the first three Randy Travis album, I mean, I knew it all. So it's, it's, it starts all there. And I love what's playing now too. I, I some maybe too pop for me. I got to, you know, whatever I'm comfortable with, but I, I love the fact of bringing 90s and today's sound in there. So Jason's the guy that does that and he does a great dog job. And then we're looking forward to heading back to the studio in February probably for the next album in 22. You, you've alluded to a few times that I want to touch on it here before we let you go, but you talked about the future. You are writing new music, it sounds like. You are trying to find your uh, sound, as you just mentioned as well. What does the future hold for Lori? What does the future hold? Is are you working on your follow up album? Are you looking uh, working on anything in particular that we could uh, potentially talk about here? Really exciting stuff because uh, we had a bunch of songs co written, you know, roughed up, and we we're looking at what we had, and one of them was really nice and catchy, and we had to get the video because the album is probably going to come out April or May, you know, long weekend ish, something like that. But we had a song. And uh, I talked to Jason about it and I said, we have to get a rough demo of this done as fast as possible because it's a summer type feel song and we got to get the video done for summer ends. So I ended up going to the studio, have this done. It'll be, you know, fine tuned and refinished in the winter for the album. So we got the video done and it's ready to go as far as far as the first single, the next album, which, which is probably next May. But, um, We'll have to choose from what we have. I mean, uh, a lot of stuff down on paper, and 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 Jason's the guy. I Jason is is today's world, right? He's he's up there with the best in Canada, or, you know, as far as musicians, producers, guitar players. And I I bring him this. This is what I have: acoustic and vocals, and this is what I see. And then he says, "That's great. How about we do this, this, this to bring it more today, and so on." But keep what I'm giving him, and and mix everything up so just a little bit of today today sound in my nineties set up or song structures and stuff like uh, before we talk about that album the next album i want to ask this question because i i i, I always want to ask uh musicians what their process of choosing the song because i can imagine when you write a song you record a song that is your baby that is your child you 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 have connections with that song but when you write so many songs and you produce so many songs, you think they're all great. So the process of selecting 10 to 12 songs to put on an album must be excruciatingly hard because I can just imagine for myself to put pen to paper and try to get 10 things that I want in one item is hard. So how do you <laughs> get that process to get your uh, library of songs and uh, uh, to only 12 or 15 or however many are going to be on that album? How is that process for you? Is it hard or is it sort of easy because you know the feel that you're looking for in this album? It was very hard at, <laughs> from the 200 songs I, I got. And at the end of the day, I had to listen to my heart and which I, what I connected to, what I see myself singing, what I could feel and hopefully people would feel too. It's funny because I got probably a couple of hundred more demo songs for the next album. And within an hour or two, I said, no, 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 no to most of them. <laughs> So I just feel I want to get more of my stories involved with other co-writers for this album. Uh, but I'm really happy from the songs we chose for the first album. And, and, and some of it will resemble the, the next album. And, and when I'm redefining and fine-tuning my sound for the next album, because there'll be a lot more of me in there. Let's talk about uh, the next few months, because the new album is not coming out until April or May next year, as you uh, just said. So that's 2022. Um, you have an abundance of music already. You have great music that's on uh, Spotify, YouTube. Uh, you can download it as well. How can people get involved? How can people start listening to your music? This is the time to pitch my listeners and tell them how they can actually <laughs> list them. Because I always find it interesting when musicians actually have to pitch themselves because they're so used to just being able to put it on the radio and people picking it up. But in your own words, 
why should people follow you and why should people join the uh, LeBlanc fan club? Because I'm certainly joining it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could, I'm could. just asking people to just go on lordleblanc.com or Lord LeBlanc, Spotify, TikTok, Instagram, whatever. We'd like, like, love to hear from you, but have a listen. And, and, and if you like it, fine. If you don't, that's fine too. Um, we're just... We're, we're just doing what we love and, and, and hopefully connect to as many people as we can and not get too stressed about if it ends up playing or being loved or not. And, and there's lots of styles out there of country that people like or don't like. But uh, if you like it, that's great. We got, you know, great, great fans that are always there. And But one spot really is lordlebanon.com and then you can go see where Instagram and, and everything else is there as far as social media is there. So during this uh, pandemic, I know we talked about it a little bit, but I want to ask, uh, because I see that a lot of uh, musicians, and you are a musician, so you're probably doing this, you might not be, but are you doing virtual concerts as well, like sort of Facebook Live concerts? Because I know a lot of musicians are turning to social media to get their word out and connect with their fans during this time when you're not able to, or how are you connecting with the fans to talk to them to keep them engaged with your music and let them know that new music is on their way in 2022, but also all in is here. Go, get, go all in with the Lori Blakeman, the Lori LeBlanc, because <laughs> that is what we need. So how are you connecting with your fans during this time? Well, actually we, we did do a few virtual shows during the summer from owners that asked us to do private shows on, on their on sites and so on. And that was fun. You know, me, two, three guys and so on. Uh, but uh Actually, we did we did do something where we wanted to connect somehow to our media with the fans called Monday Lies with Lori. And in French, it's Lundi Live avec Lori. So we're all over the province pretty much on Monday nights and, and some some place where it could be interesting for people to see and so on. And we're connecting uh, with people around 7 p.m. at night to, to just to chat what's going on and, and personal and, and, and music and, and give out prizes and albums. And, and people are, are really tuning in. So thanks, everybody, for for tuning in and, and, you know, giving comments and so on of, of what's going on. So that's what we're doing now. We have a, a bunch of shows this fall in New Brunswick, including a big Christmas show. It's a 2000 seater. We're always sold out, sold out every year. I, I host the event and, and we have three or four guests, but people aren't really comfortable with doing that this year. So that's out the door, but uh, I'm doing heavy renovations inside right now. Since we have time, my wife wants to change a bunch of stuff around. So walls are being torn out right now for the next two or three weeks. And uh, we're just getting lots of writing in every morning and so on uh, to get ready for for the studio in the winter. And, and I hope 22 opens up where we can travel to Quebec and parts of Ontario because I haven't been there a couple of years. Well, I'm or going a year to say and a half or so. I, I'm going to say this because uh, I know the person who does the Calgary Stampede out here and I know they are a listener of the show. Uh, I would highly recommend 2022 if we do have the Calgary Stampede to call Laurie up because uh, I think he would do fantastic here in the city of Calgary. We are uh, country music headquarters of Alberta and I would highly recommend Laurie coming out here and if you do Laurie I would be the first person to buy a ticket and uh, get in line to see you because I think you're your music is great and it is uh, something that we need in this ever changing world. So thank you. Um, and thank you for doing this. This is an honor and a pleasure and all in is fantastic. Like I said to at the beginning of the show, check out the show notes, click on it, listen to it, listen to it again, because it is a fantastic song. Lori, thank you so much for doing this. Thanks. Thanks for the very kind words. You know, I, I got great musicians, a great show and very happily go back to Calgary and, and do something up there. Thanks. Thanks. Very nice of you. Thanks, Chris.